I see you shiver with anticipation. What are your respective roles in staging the Rocky Horror Picture Show Coachella Valley Shadowcast in Palm Springs? Uh, my name's Katrina Storton. I am one of the founders and producer and past directors of the show. And I'm Calvin Sanger. I'm the current director of this production. Basically how we divide it is anything that happens on the stage, I'm taking care of. Anything behind the scenes, that's all Katrina. The Rocky Horror Show premiered in 1973 mm -hmm. and the film premiered in 1975. Mm -hmm. How is Rocky Horror still relevant in 2024? The way I see it is that Rocky Horror Picture Show has always touched those who are weird, unusual, don't fit in very well. And granted, it is very much tied to the LGBTQ community, but anyone can love Rocky. And I think that it's quirkiness, it's humor, it's music, it's just timeless. And it's going to continue for generations, but it's still relevant today because we're still fighting for LGBT rights. And that is a huge part of the film, but also it's an opportunity in a space for safety and acceptance. Absolutely. And the way I always like to say it is the show is so bizarre and alienating that because no one truly fits it and because no one truly is a part of it, we all fit. We're all the same. You know, we're all <laughs> equally yeah. thrown off. And that's that's the fun. And then, you know, Astro Gas has evolved even today in 2024. I feel like it's evolved and changed into something that's a bit separate from what it was back in the day and just become its own tradition, really. But something I do have to comment on is that... So uh, just a quick backstory with my relationship with Rocky Horror. The first time I went to the Rocky Horror Picture Show was in the early 80s, well before you were born. And uh, I went in junior high school. And at the time, it was at the Orange Mall 6 Theater. So in, you know, North Orange County. Mm -hmm. And a, a theater that has already been torn down and no longer exists. And it was kind of the heyday of Rocky Horror. And there were two theaters it was so popular that they played it in two theaters at midnight, not just in one. They labeled one the Rowdy and one the Tame. <laughs> and the moment I went to it, I was absolutely hooked. I mean, the whole rock and roll, the whole glam rock aspect, the whole acceptance of anybody, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, anything, was just so amazing to me. But what I have to say about the Coachella Valley Shadow cast is when it came to Palm Springs, first of all, so exciting for me because I had always kind of grown up thinking that, oh, you know, as soon as I become an adult and I don't have my parents to get in the way, like I'm going to go to Rocky Horror every weekend at midnight. And I worked at Disneyland for many years. And of course, you know, at Disneyland, you work till two, three in the morning sometimes. So mm -hmm. like when I first became an adult, that just wasn't going to happen. When I finally left Disneyland and then I went into education, you know, finally I could really do it. Well, by then, I don't want to stay up till two thirty in the morning. <laughs> So for you guys to bring the Rocky Horror Picture Show to the two Palm Springs at a reasonable hour at nine <laughs> o'clock, <laughs> I can be in bed by 1115. <laughs> but it's not just the fact that you brought Rocky Horror to the Coachella Valley. Um, you know, there's been incidences of Rocky Horror being played in the Coachella Valley before but you brought it in the way that I felt that I saw it in its heyday. Thank you. The Hulk uh, shadow cast, you know, being so into it, the crowd was obviously into it, you know, with all of the lines and everything, you know, as opposed to, you know, going to Rocky Horror and there's like maybe two people that speak up and, you know, everybody else doesn't know what this don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that you equipped people with prop bags this was amazing to me. I felt like it was 1982 all over again. And so for that, I just have to thank you. Oh, that means a lot. Honestly, when I was growing up, I, I saw what the Rocky Horror Picture Show, what you're saying, how in the 80s, it was so much more lively. All the shadow casts were just crazy. And that was my inspiration. That was a huge part of my goal. And my love for Rocky, I wanted to make sure everyone got the full experience. Because when I was younger, I grew up here in the Coachella Valley. I, I grew up in La Quinta. And my very first Rocky was at the Westfield Mall when it was the Westfield Mall at the Cinemas Palm d'Or, which is sadly no longer functioning. But they right. had night Halloween performances and it was just the movie, no shadow cast. And I'd be there and there'd maybe be five people in the theater total. And <laughs> 
was the only one running down the aisle, getting in front of the screen and doing the time warp all by myself because I knew <laughs> that that's what you're supposed to do. Right, right. <laughs> and if I can take back off that a little bit, our main goal with this has been the community. Mm -hmm. We have an all local shadow cast instead of sourcing from out, you know, from LA mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. sourcing a professional cast elsewhere because we want engagement on the deepest level. Mm -hmm. We don't want professionals who are just doing this as a job. We want locals up there doing the time warp, doing the sweet transvestite, running around. Mm -hmm getting into it just as enthusiastic as our audience because mm -hmm. that energy you can really feel it and that's the beauty of it is that merging of the cinema and the live theater and really feeling that full energy yes yeah. and since we come out of covid I, I i will say that when movie theaters opened back up again i feel like some people had an issue shifting back to theater etiquette mm -hmm. you know people are on their phones more maybe talking during movies more because we had a couple years inside on our couches watching movies with our family and friends so i think that this is a really good kind of bridge because it lets the audience throw away all theater etiquette Kit. We want you to throw rice. We <laughs> want water to be squirting. We want you to be yelling and heckling us and cursing us out during the show. And it's just so much fun to be able to let go and be allowed to do that in the theater. That's a really good point. I like that. Yeah, you, gotta, you know, give yourself over to the sins of the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this next question you've kind of answered, but Calvin, I wonder if you have a different answer. How did the Rocky Horror Picture Show first come into your life? Through Katrina, actually. She dragged me into it, and I loved every second of it. I discovered it in college. She brought me to a performance, and sure enough, they dragged me on stage with a big old V on my forehead. <laughs> stranger, I mean... At that All point, right. absolutely hooked. You know, I could just feel the love and support of mm -hmm. everyone in that room and just the embrace of the absurd. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's what it's all about. Just being able to let go of any inhibitions mm -hmm. and just feel free for the community. Excellent. Okay, so what is the origin story of the Coachella Valley Shadow Cast? You know, how did this first start? So I was currently studying in 2019 at the University of Santa Barbara, and I had joined the Shadow Cast on campus and played Magenta for two shows and it was a lot of fun and then COVID happened and we ended up having to move back to the desert because that's where my family was you know everyone lost their jobs their apartments have to rebuild a bit during that time so I was actually working at Peach Whiskers Goods in Palm Desert uh, I was working there with Jennifer Riley the owner and I was telling her about how I have this film degree but now we're in COVID and the film industry is kind of dead and I don't know what to do with it and I'm back in my hometown and I want to reconnect with my community because before I left Palm Desert, um, the Coachella Valley, I was I was 17, 18. So coming back in 2020, I could finally go to bars. I could go to the more adult lifestyle of the area. And I wanted to bring rock to it because I figured, you know what, we're, we're slowly getting out of COVID. People are coming back to theaters. Why not give them something big to come back to? And luckily, Jennifer knew somebody at the Palm Springs Cultural Center. So I pitched my idea to her for an email. I connected with Lauren Wolfer, who was running the event coordinator at the time. And then she connected me with Eric, who's the main manager of the Palm Springs Cultural Center. And in Eric's um, own way, i paraphrasing here, basically my passion for wanting to put this on is what convinced him. Because they had sourced out Sins of the Flesh from L.A. before and had them come out. And it was a good show, but it didn't have the energy that came. Eric was looking for that 80 crazy Rocky Horror experience. It was very professional and very much like the actors have been doing it for a long time. And so it wasn't, it didn't have that creative spark, that motivation that you get from very new naive actors you, or novice actors. And so my passion, I pretty much begged the camel on it. Said, Please just let me put on a show. You won't have to pay for anything. You can keep the tickets. I just want to be able to do it. And they let me. And it was a huge hit because of just everyone who was in the cast could feed off, I guess, my energy and my passion for this. Half of the cast were close friends of mine who were willing to fill the roles because we didn't have enough auditioners. And That's awesome. We scraped by with, there's only 10 roles in the film. And we had eight people. And two weeks before the show, we got our Dr. Scott and we got our criminologist. Funny enough, our Dr. Scott found our flyer in the trash can of the public library and called us. <laughs> 
And it was like everything was falling into place. I mean, at that point, we had to have it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> for it. And you it you never like know. Shit. And once I did one, I knew I wanted to do another. And Palm Springs Cultural Center said, yeah, let's do it again. We'll do it every fall or summer. Let's see how this goes. And by the next one, more people were interested because they saw the first one and they got inspired. And since then, every show we've done has just gathered more and more people and more and more community. And Peach Whiskers Goods has been our sponsor since the get-go. The idea of this was born in her store while talking with her. When I realized it was actually a feasible goal was when she decided to put on a photo shoot for her store that was Rocky Horror themed with all the items from her store. And then I saw that there were a group of people that'd be willing to dress up all silly like this and take pictures fondling each other and holding each other <laughs> crazy faces. And I saw the potential right then and there with that photo shoot. And I can even send you the link to that original video, that original photo shoot. And, cool. and yeah, from then on, I, I just started gathering people and it just took off on its own. And from these humble beginnings, seeing how much we've managed to engage with the community, mm -hmm. seeing how much our actors have grown and developed and gone on to do other things. It's just, it's, it's just so touching. It, it's truly just one of the most fulfilling things we've ever had the opportunity to do. And clearly several of the actors have really enjoyed themselves. Uh, I remember the woman that played uh, Dr. Frankenfurter the next time around played Jan. Mm -hmm. And so it was so cool to see her come back. You know, yeah. that's, uh, that means she's obviously really into it. I love it. Her and name is Tracy, mm -hmm. Tracy Torres, and she's an incredible actress. And she was actually in that initial photo shoot that I did before this was ever an idea. Oh, very good. Yeah. And, you know, a little fun fact, she will be playing Riff Raff in our coming production. So all right, really want to see her step outside of her comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's that's awesome. Already. We, um, we like to make sure that our returner actors have another opportunity to explore themselves and other characters and add more experience to their portfolio. So our rules, if anyone returns to us, they can't play the same role twice. They have oh, okay. to challenge themselves and approach something new each time yeah well i feel like your whole story you know is very like do it yourself you know you had a vision and you know it's kind of you know, you guys against the world to make this happen yes. and, <laughs> and to me that really like brings back the spirit of like the early punk rock days you know mm -hmm. diy and do it yourself not only are you your own show you know putting on the show but also the advertising and the promoting and you know every aspect of this you know i, I think that that's really cool Thank you. Um, yeah, the first two shows, I did all the poster work for the auditions and stuff on my own little sketch pad and just put those out there. Luckily, this time around, I've actually been able to connect with some local artists out here in the area, and they've been making some incredible poster art and promotional images, and I'm just so happy to be able to to promote people who have also come from this desert and what they are capable of doing, the talents that they possess. Also, every single prop in our show is handmade by either me or one of our actors. The costumes, sure, a lot of them are purchased from Goodwills or thrift stores of the like, but we still have to alter them. So we have sewing machines, we have the dazzlers, we, we make everything look as we want. And I think what also sets us apart from some other shadow casts is we don't strive for screen accuracy right we yeah. know that it's already on the screen you already know what the costume is supposed to look like i want our actors to have their their riffraff be able to make the character their own because that's how you're going to get a better performance out. and that's a really good point she makes about how we're trying not to be screen accurate there are a lot of moments that we want to try and match up and pay tribute but at the same time we are doing a satirization of the piece you know it's a it's a cult classic it's the fun so we have a lot of little gaps where the movie itself is kind of just a set piece where it shows us directly what we're going against so we can make a little gag, so we can make a little joke, so we can engage with the audience a bit more and her kind of call out, call and response. Yeah, I think that that's the perfect attitude is that, you know, to not go for screen accuracy, just go for a fun time. A fun time that you want the cast to be having fun. And mm -hmm. if the cast are having fun, then the audience is going to have fun. Precisely. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> yeah. 
So let's talk about Palm Springs. You know, why is Palm Springs and the Palm Springs Cultural Center the perfect location to do a shadow cast for Rocky Horror? Not only has the Palm Springs Cultural Center been a landmark of the Coachella Valley for multiple decades now. I mean, it was just the Camelot Theater for a long time, and then it became the Cultural Center with the Camelot Theater inside of it. So it's a historical monument in this valley. And not only is it the biggest screen in the Coachella Valley, it also has a huge stage in front of it, much bigger than a lot of the stages we've seen from the theaters out here. Maybe not the Macau, but... <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> it, honestly, that gives us the freedom to add a lot more production value to it. Mm -hmm. We have space on the sides of the screen to put some established set pieces. We can bring out bigger props, bigger set pieces, have costume changes in the mm -hmm. wings. Um, it really just allows us to bring a lot more live theater elements and musical elements to this kind of fun, kitschy little cold gathering. You know, I also feel that, you know, Palm Springs really has a retro vibe to it. Yes. You know, the, yeah, the mid-century modern architecture, modernism week, all mm -hmm. sorts of things that are really retro. And, you know, here's a film from the 1970s that really had its heyday in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. and But the film itself, the music is paying homage to the 1950s. Yes. And the horror movies and the sci-fi films that they're paying homage to are really like B-rated films from the 50s and the 40s and yeah. even the 30s. So to me, that screams that Palm Springs is the perfect place because mm -hmm. this is the total retro show. Yes. And it's the total exactly. retro town. It 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 fits so well in Palm Springs. It's like it was always meant to be there. I couldn't see. I mean, we've we've thought about other desert cities out here. We have at least thought about the potential of that. And while we could definitely do a show in Indio or Coachella, it fits so well in Palm Springs. Not only because of the retroness, but also because of the community that lives out there and the tourists that come there. It's a it's a town to let go. It's a yes. town to yeah. just enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with that. So in casting the different roles for Rocky Horror, uh, which role do you find the most challenging to cast? That and why with every cast that we see. In the past, we've had difficulties casting Riff Raff because people just see what we see on the screen, this creature. But there's a lot more to his character, too, and a lot more depth that we can go against. You don't necessarily need to be an ugly hunchback <laughs> going around there's this kind of calm collected secretiveness that he has you know he's a conspirator he's plotting this whole time for the uh the overthrow the big right twist at the end so there's this this little um almost arrogance yeah. to him this this kind of i know something you don't oh you're beneath me because you know in just yeah. a matter of time I'll control everything. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's hard to see that at face value. So a lot of times with the casting, a lot of people aren't really interested in trying to portray that. Everyone wants to be sexy and everyone wants to be, you know, where they feel the most free. Uh, they also feel like he's kind of a low energy character, which mm -hmm. isn't also necessarily true. There's some subdued intensity to it, but there's a lot of outbursts. There's a lot of big moments where he can really contrast with that kind of um, laid back attitude. Yeah, he's also a really important character because this is the character that introduces you to the world of these Transylvanians. Yes, exactly. And it transitions you from, you know, at one point in time, a lot of the folklore behind Rocky Horror has said that at one point in time, they wanted the movie to kind of mimic The Wizard of Oz. where. Right. You know, it would start off in black and white mm -hmm. until Brad and Janet get into the castle. And then mm -hmm. the moment that the time warp doors open, that it would all turn to color. Yes. And, you know, of course, they decided not to do that. But Riff Raff is the character that does that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's really great that you bring that up because we have Brad and Janet who represent the mundane world, the normal, whatever, you know, we've established as what's normative. And immediately, as soon as they meet Riff Raff, he breaks out of those social customs. You know, you have Brad coming right out. Hi, I'm Brad Majors, tries to go for a handshake. And Riff Raff just stares at him like, <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. And it kind of, shakes up our, our worldview we've also talked about how brad and janet aren't necessarily the the main plot point they kind of collide with our plot with yes. frank and fur and the creation of rocky we set up this kind of false narrative where we're going off on this happy-go-lucky adventure we have these two teens who are about to get married and then nope frankenstein yeah. and 
and heels. <laughs> you know, one thing I've always thought about with Rocky Horror is that the, the casting and the movie that, you know, Brad and Janet are played by American actors. Mm-hmm. Right. And everybody else is British or uh, in the case of Little Nell, I think she's Australian. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I love the fact that the two Americans are the humans. Mm-hmm. And then all of the other characters, all of the aliens of the world that they're all um foreigners you know they're from an american perspective you know they're they're mostly british people and i just think of like the cultural values and sensitivities and that you know americans can be kind of repressed Mm -hmm. and conservative and so like these aliens you know that are these brits they might as well be aliens you know (laughs) with their different attitude of the world well you have that line at the very end of time warp where janet's asking brad to leave and he goes no darling these are foreigners with ways different than our own they might do some more folk dancing Uh there's no (laughs) that's the that's the perfect line to really hone in that these could just be british people but for them it's just foreigners (laughs) <laughs> and who doesn't love joining in with some folk dancing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. What challenges do you face keeping Rocky Horror alive and well in the Coachella Valley? Because this is not your first time at bat. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people definitely don't expect the production value that we put into this. They're expecting the old tradition of Rocky where disorganized people just run up and start doing it from them. Just jump in. They don't anticipate that we've been rehearsing for weeks, months even. Um, just to get all these details perfectly right, to get this choreography refined in this large space, to make these props and these costumes and make sure everything is cohesive. Mm-hmm. So really just kind of showing that we're doing something a bit more than the traditional shadow cast. That's probably been the biggest difficulty. Yes, for certain, because especially when you tell people who know about Rocky Horror or have a concept of the shadow cast, they're like, oh, that sounds fun. That sounds cute. What do you mean it's $18? And we're like, going to a movie is $18 nowadays. So now you get a movie with a show and a whole night that you're going to remember for a long time. And that's priceless to me, at least. But Absolutely. Yes, yeah. there is definitely a, a stereotype and a predisposition that people have around Rocky. And we're trying to, to break that. We're trying to let them know that this is a huge production value performance. And right. our actors have been working for months. And le- like we said, we're not trying to be screen accurate. So what we're doing in these rehearsals is honing in everybody's individual versions of their characters and then working it into the choreography and the blocking to make sure that their version of their character gets across. And especially any little gags we might want to do or little jokes that reflect what's going on on screen and we subvert it in some way. I mean, it's like you said at the beginning, it started off as a musical, a live production before they ever made the movie. So what we're trying to do is kind of merge the two. We're trying to bring back that history of it being a musical and being a full production and just use the the movie as a set piece behind that. You know, I think that it can be easy, too, for people that do have a history with Rocky Horror to be a little skeptical. Skeptical in that, you know, if there's somebody like me who remembers the heyday and remembers, you know, the the mania inside of a theater at midnight, and then to see it over the years, you know, become, you know, Rocky Horror has never gone away. It's always been there. So it's surviving. I mean, it's only almost been 50 years. And so it's surviving through this every new generation there's some people that really love it and glam onto it but it's rare to see it in its form from the heyday Mm -hmm. so i you know the very first time i went to see this i mean i I could kind of have the attitude is like i just i don't miss rocky horror if there's an opportunity to do rocky horror i do it (laughs) <laughs> One time I was uh, with my husband and we were in Key West on vacation, had no clue that Rocky Horror was any- anywhere nearby. And we're walking through Key West and then I saw a sign advertising. It was the, the musical, not not the movie. Uh-huh. And like, OK, well, our plans have now changed. <laughs> you know? Got it. <laughs> we're going to the Rocky Horror Show, and uh, we got to figure out what we're going to do with his mom. <laughs> 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 so you know every time i've had an opportunity to see whether it's the play or the the movie i always go but you know you're not used to seeing it in recent years be so such a big production and so right. 
detail oriented and so much energy. So I think, you know, I would imagine that part of the challenge is if there's people that are just kind of like casual lifelong rock Rocky fans, they may not realize, no, 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 you, you can't miss this. <laughs> this is the real deal. Also, I mean, I feel like we, we've been told that we have this sort of protective bubble around us because of the generation we're from that we're, we're younger. And so right. our demographic and any younger individuals are kind of taking the lead from us, especially in terms of the audience that comes to the show. And there have been approaches to Rocky Horror to make it less raunchy, to mm-hmm. make it a little more tame. Like you said, there was a there's a wild version and a tame version. Yeah. That you attended and and we've thought about that because when I was younger and I when I saw Rocky at 13 and 14 I I wish that there was a shadow cast that I could see that would have been age appropriate in a way to where my parents would have let me go and so we thought about doing that but really 18 and up 21 and up ideal but 18 and up and people know what they're coming in for mm-hmm. Rocky if, if you're going to the show you know what you're in for you're pretty much consenting by buying the ticket yeah if your friends are roping you along, then they know you pretty well. And you can always sit in the center of the theater, in the center of a row, and not get touched, not get sprayed. <laughs> but if you're in the aisle seats or the front row, you're in the splash zone. And people yeah. know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's be- when, we, when we're up there, we make sure that all of our actors fully consent to you know all the activity that's on stage. And we end up really respecting each other and having a lot of fun. And we, and we break some of those boundaries that you don't normally have because this is a really intimate troupe. The show is very intimate, so they have to get comfortable with each other. So we have games where we, everyone learns each other's names and we make sure that nobody is touched in any way they don't want to be. And we work around any discomforts or parameters that people have that way they're as comfortable as they can be on stage and the audience will feel comfortable because they're comfortable and if the actors are having fun fondling each other then maybe you and your your seatmate will do it <laughs> it's a all is allowed sort of night and as i've said many times up on that stage if you're uncomfortable if you don't like it then get the fuck out of the theater yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's some great points that katrina made mm-hmm. i mean it's at the end of the day the point of rocky is to let go be free and just you know break all the rules so if we're adding extra rules and trying to be you know safe and go halfway with it it's it's, you're cool. going to lose the energy mm-hmm. you know it's it's going to feel like a half measure and you know we're all in yeah, and there's a long tradition. So to do it half ass, it, you know, that doesn't work when you have almost 50 years tradition behind it. So the fact that you've gone all in is, you know, fantastic. So how has the process of the shadow cast evolved? So this is, you know, you, you've done this now multiple times, you, you know, about every six months hmm. that uh, it's come back to the Palm Springs Cultural Center. So compare the first time you did it to the current time. How has the, that evolved? The first time was definitely crazy. It was a hot mess. <laughs> like it might have looked good on stage and I'm glad it did, but it was a hot mess behind we, the stage. We're getting- yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was purely just a a passion project. And that was all that was motivating all of us was just how much fun we all had in it. And it, it, it really got by because of the grace of so many volunteers and so many people willing to, to contribute, even at the last minute. But since the first one, like I said before, a lot of people have wanted to get involved. A lot of people have wanted to help out. Like every time we do this, we get more and more interested people, but we also get more and more talented people, more and more people that can see the effort we're putting out and that they're willing to match it. I mean, the first time we only had Peach Whiskers supporting us. Now we have five sponsors behind Behind us who are contributing photography, videography, makeup, hair, costuming, props, even monetary assistance, read through, read through locations, rehearsal locations. So many people want us to stay here and keep it going that they're willing to help us make that happen. It, it's been so rewarding. And I feel like every time we do this, we just meet more and more amazing people. We touch more and more lives. And yeah, what's really helped is as we gained awareness, it's been a lot easier to ask because we've had a lot more people come out 
addition. Mm -hmm. But what's most important is the people we've managed to add behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of just Katrina and I running around trying to take care of absolutely everything, mm -hmm. we've added some wonderful people to help with everything that goes into this show with costuming, with makeup, with even a lot of the technical elements. Mm -hmm. Just being able to professionally like this show, too, mm -hmm. has made a huge difference in production value. Our very first show, Calvin was the only spotlight operator. And okay. then our show, it was him and one additional crew member. And now, you don't have to spotlight the show anymore. We have two designated spotlight operators who one of them has done it before one of them has never done it before but we're able to train them and now they have a new skill that they can go forward with and that's a huge part of my journey with this show is I want to make sure that people get something out of this because we're not able to, to pay them for their role it's a right. volunteer effort it's a volunteer show and so I want to make sure that people feel like they're getting something out of it and they're learning new experiences and new skills we have a lot of actors who come in audition who have never acted in anything before mm -hmm. never taken a dance class and we say that's okay you got passion you got the drive we'll teach you the tap number we'll show you how to block yourself and then like we we've had a, a cast member after working with us go and direct a direct a high school play because she was inspired by us or you worked with our last Columbia and she'd never done a dance before and he taught her the whole dance number and now she's off in college and she's taking dance classes on the side fantastic you no know, it's yeah. just We've, we've, it's nice to know that we've influenced people's lives and something more than just Rocky, that we've taught them a skill and that they're going forward with it and they're having their own journey now. It's been beautiful to watch, really. Well, well, what a fantastic first experience. You know, for some, maybe the first experience in, you know, something um, theatrical or for some, it might be the first experience in anything creative. Mm -hmm. We've even had some actors who have never seen Rocky Horror before auditioning for us. <laughs> They're complete virgins themselves. Uh -huh. That takes some guts. Good for them. It does. really does. Yeah. And we don't take that lightly. We understand that they're willing to do these crazy outfits and crazy scenes without even knowing its origin. And yeah. that firing in itself, it shows right there the relevance of Rocky Horror and what it holds. Even without seeing it, you can still feel the freedom and want to do it. Are there any fun rehearsal or performance stories that you'd like to share? What? Going off of that, there's something that I tell the cast every time we start one of these. And it's something that one of my acting teachers told me when I was growing up. I told them all, when you're on stage, you should be a pigeon, not a bowling ball. I'll elaborate. If I take a rope and I tie it around a pigeon and I say, fly, pigeon, fly, it's going to take off. It's going to have no problem getting way up into the sky. And if it goes a little too far, I can pull it back pretty easily. But right. if I take a bowling ball and I say, fly, bowling ball. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time getting it up there. So, you know, with your energy level, with your commitment to the performance, with your commitment to every single large, silly thing we do, better to go too far, better to be too big. And we can always reel it back a little bit than to be too small and have to really try and get that energy up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that completely makes sense. You know, not just from the like theater aspect, you know, because there's a distance, like if you're sitting in the back row compared to people right. that are right in the front, there's there's a physical distance. So right. the bigger yeah. you can go, the better. But you're exactly. also in a you're also in a dark theater, mm -hmm. you know, on top of that. And, and granted, you guys do a great job with lighting and everything, but it's like I, I could see how it'd be really conducive to just no, just go for it. Absolutely go mm -hmm. for it. <laughs> We definitely treat it, like you said, the, the, the screen is a prop. It's, yes. it's a guide, really. So we treat this like it's a stage production. Our makeup, our movements, our their portrayals are all played to the back row. Excellent. Thank you so much for, for joining me on this. You know, being such a lifelong Rocky fan, I am so grateful to you guys bringing it to my home in Palm Springs. And again, like I said, at a reasonable hour. And, and um <laughs> And I love the fact, too, that it's been coming back every six months. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that I've probably uh, texted you on on uh, Instagram literally every time that it just finished. Mm -hmm. Like, is it coming back? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. part of that reason is, I mean, obviously, I want to encourage it to come back. But part of that, too, is that, you know, I go on, uh, my husband and I travel a lot. And it's like, well, if it's only every six months, I don't want to be out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, our show's keeping you here. Yeah. Okay, so please share with the audience uh, when and where can people see the Coachella Valley Shadowcast perform in front of the Rocky Horror Picture Show next? Our next show is on Saturday, June 1st, 2024. 
at the Palm Springs Cultural Center inside the Camelot Theater. Our cocktail hour starts at 8 p.m. Our MC speech starts at 9, and the show starts around 9.30. But you definitely want to be there at 9 if you're a virgin. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you, Andy. This has been a really pleasant interview, and it's really heart-touching how much this show not only has been a treasure for you, but I'm sure for a lot of our returners. And, I mean, we've had some audience members that I recognize being in the front row who are now acting in our show. And, oh, awesome. And we've inspired other shadow casts we've been reached out to by other rocky shadow casts from even canada and sicily have reached out and it's how much this show has just touched everyone around the world really and it just started in a bald man's mind in a barbershop (laughs) in new zealand (laughs) it's it's crazy so i was just in new zealand in january february Uh And, you know, there's a statue of riffraff in a small town in New Zealand. And I tried so hard to talk my husband into going to there. But it was like, but it was going to be like, you know, a couple hours, you know, Mm -hmm. out of the way. And we didn't have a rental car. And then you have Mm -hmm. to drive on the wrong, you know, the other side of the street. And Mm -hmm. I never did talk him into it. But he's been a great sport. He's come to uh, Rocky Horror all over the world. He's he's gone to see you guys several times. Uh, you know, I've taken him to Oakley Court. You know the the castle where Rocky Horror was filmed. Yes. Every single time we go to Europe, I make him go there. So uh, <laughs> I got to give him a pass on this one. He's been very cool about it. That's so sweet. <laughs> okay, well, I will see you guys at the next performance. Looking we forward look to forward it. To it. Um definitely let us know when you arrive because we'll have a videographer actually going around and interviewing some of the audience members in the lobby during cocktail hour and i'd love to get a moment with you and have you you know tell us about your experience with the show and have that be put on our social so we can promote you as well absolutely oh cool well thank you so much you're very welcome thank you so much for supporting us bye